Welcome to the Wisdom of Jacob's Ladder. I'm your host, Jacob Cooper, best-selling author of Life After Breath and the Wisdom of Jacob's Ladder. For those of you who are new to my channel, we love having you. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and bell notification icon to stay up to date to weekly podcasts and interviews coming your way. For those of you who have been here before, we love having you back on. Please make sure to share this video and comment in the comment sections to help a growing community here on the Wisdom Jacobs Ladder. Today's guest is Laura Worcester. Laura is a renowned intuitive and medium, and she has a lot of profound uh, stories and insight to share with us here on the Wisdom Jacobs Ladder. She's also a podcast host as well. So she does a lot of work to really help people um, in many different facets. So without further ado, we welcome Laura Worcester here on the Wisdom Jacobs Ladder. Laura Wister, it's a tremendous honor to have you here on, as my guest in the Wisdom Jacobs Ladder. Oh, I'm so happy to be here. Thanks for the invitation. It's, it's an honor to be with you today, Jacob. Yeah, you know, I know I've been on your platform a couple of times, and that was a great conversation. So it, it's just an honor to now be on the other side of things, talking about the other side of things, I'm sure, with yeah. you as a brilliant medium extraordinaire that you are, which we'll get into uh, but again, a terrific honor to have you. So, Laura, for my guest, do you mind, you know, maybe sharing a little bit about Laura Wister, you know, some of your passions deep within, some of the incredible work that you do for viewers who uh, may not know of your work at this moment? Okay, well, I'm, I'm an intuitive medium, which um, means that the work that I do sometimes involves um, a lot of times involves connecting to the other side for people here for the purpose of their healing. Also, I can do a, you know intuitive connections as well. So if people need guidance or they want some deeper insight about what's happening in their life and the potentials of where things are going in their life, um, I, I offer that as well. So that's that's why I call myself an intuitive medium because I do both of those things. And so I help he the people here in the living and you know to, to navigate their life, but also to help them connect with their loved ones on the other side. Now, I'm sure you get asked this a lot, but for my viewers, correct me if I'm wrong, that not every psychic is a medium, but most mediums are intuitive and psychic, you would say, or how would you describe that? Yes, that's true. That's true. Every, uh, not every psychic is a medium, but every medium is a psychic, correct? Because a medium uses the psychic faculties in order to connect to the other side. So we have to have that connection and awareness of that and how that works. So um, yeah, so not every psychic is going to end up being someone who connects to the other side. They might sometimes cross that the veil a bit from time to time. And those people might, um, people from the other side might step into a reading, but it may not be a consistent type of thing. Um, but yes, that's true. Um, and yes, because yeah, my, all mediums are psychic. Yep. Wow. And you are someone certainly with many gifts as both an intuitive and a medium. And, you know, I, I love the quote by Pablo Picasso, and I'm probably getting the order around, but he says something along the lines that, your purpose of life is to find your gift and the meaning of it is to give it away. Yeah. And so I, I, you know, certainly you have an incredible gift that, uh, that is undoubtable, but out of curiosity, when did you recognize or do you recognize this as a gift and how did that all begin? Um, well, yeah, it's funny because I, when I was very, very young and like a lot of children, most children are incredibly intuitive people. And so, um, when I was really young, I used to hear and see things that uh, I thought was normal until I realized that other people around me weren't experiencing the same thing I was. They weren't hearing what I was hearing. They weren't seeing what I was seeing and feeling what I was feeling. So then I gradually, I just shut it down. So, and then when I was an adult, every once in a while, I'd have something that would come through like, oh, that's weird. You know, I was like, how did, how did, how did I know that was going to happen? Or um, why am I sensing this or feeling that or seeing that? But it was, you know, um, not as often as it was when I was a child. But when I became a mother, and I was a, I'm a mom of two young children, um, something happened where I don't know if it's just part of the, the biology of being a mother and it just sort of, you know, mother's intuition really truly kicks in. Um, but I started to sense things more and feel things more and more deeply. I started to sense energy and and uh, some unusual things started to happen. Um, and at one point, I, I, I think I realized at that point that um, I probably had undiagnosed postpartum depression and I had no idea. Hmm. So 
I went to a doctor to, to talk to talk to them about this. And, you know, I'm, I always say I'm an open book. I'll, t- I'll, t- I'll share my story with anybody only because I think it will help people. Um, so, you know, of course, the medication was discussed and all those things. And there's a place for that. I, I totally think there's a place for that in, in a lot of people's lives. Um, but I really wanted to stay away from that as much as I could. It helped for a short amount of time, but I didn't want to make it something I wanted to stay on to help me through that. So I started meditating and I was meditating 20 minutes a day, hmm. for like six months until one day I was having a conversation with someone about someone on the other side that they were missing. And all of a sudden that person started talking to me wow. and, and they, they didn't, the person I was talking to here in the living didn't understand, like they didn't realize what was happening, but I was seeing and feeling them, their person um, step into the space that we were sharing. And, and I was like, what's going on here? <laughs> <laughs> what is happening? So um, I think because I, I went into that practice of deep meditation every day, which actually did help me quite a bit. It, it really shifted me out of that space of depression. Um, but it opened up again, this thing that used to show up when I was very young that I thought was really just, you know, the stuff of childhood. I thought it was my imagination. When in, re- in fact, you know, with some research, because I had to discover like, what what's happening here? Am, am I, is there something wrong with me? Or is there something else going on? So I, it, it opened up a whole avenue of um, research for me to figure out what was happening, until I realized that actually I, I wasn't. I was I was experiencing a connection to the other side. Um, so yeah, so that's how it started, basically in a nutshell. Wow. So yeah. it seems like meditation was your medication at the time. You know, it really yeah. was what was needed. You know, at the moment and helpful for you. Very much so, very much so. And, and you know, meditation is one of those things that doesn't cost us anything except for a few, mo- few moments or a few minutes of our time. <laughs> right. And um, and and I think I don't think this. And I don't know how you feel about this, Jacob, but I don't think there's really any drawback to to daily meditation. There really is no no bad side effects. Wow. Yeah. No. I I love that quote by Tick, the late Tick Nhat Han that says, "The quieter you become, the more you can hear, yeah. and obviously see." And it seems like that was certainly the case with yourself, you know, it's it's funny because our paths have a lot of symmetry where we were both psychic kids and our environments didn't really understand necessarily, at least, you know, from my perspective, what was going on. And so we just took that beach ball and tried to bury it as far as we could into the ocean exactly. and do what every kid is supposed to do, which is to be normal. Then we recognize that normal. doesn't exist. <laughs> yeah. um, there is no such thing. It's constantly <laughs> shifting. It's just a norm of, you know, a select few of the moment, uh, mm-hmm. but it seemed like eventually that beach ball couldn't stand your water. It needed to come up for you exactly. at a certain moment in time. And, you know, timing is everything. So for you, you get this, you know, your, your mother or two, you're in this meditation, you get these messages. Mm-hmm. Um, what allowed you to say, this is real? This Was there a point that you said, this is not like something woo, this is tangible, this is a real experience, this is actually happening, and I know it. It's I know that it's something that's authentic. Yeah, well it it um it, it I had some synchronistic things happen like soon after that moment happened. I had like a week and a half of of going between do I need to get professional help here or do I need to figure this out? So literally right. like a week and a half of of synchronicities that were happening and inexplicable things were happening energetically around me. There was lights blinking. There were animals showing up, showing up in the strangest places in the strangest ways, like all in a week and a half. And um, synchronistically, uh, I found a book, a book found me actually um, from John Edward um, called One Last Time. And I started reading this. I read it all through the night one night. I read the whole thing all the way through. And I said, I think this is what's happening. Because it, it, it reflected what I was experiencing that time in that week. So um so I so at that point I knew something was up. And that's when I really the journey really started was I just started reading everything and learning everything that I could possibly learn about what was happening so that I can understand more about the process and to still and it took me several years actually to really embrace that it was possible. Um I, I'm I'm a healthy skeptic. Um even, even though I do this work, I'm a spiritualist minister. I talk to the other side all the time. And I, I do believe in the other side. And I do believe we have, um, 
you know, uh, unseen helpers that are always with us and always support us. But I still, from time to time, I'm always checking myself just to make sure, <laughs> I, you know, just to stay, keep my feet on the ground. Um, so like I said, I'm, I'm a very help, healthy skeptic. And so it took me years to really, truly embrace that this was possible. So is it, you know, and I, I'm very grateful for the, obviously the pioneering work of John Edward, you know, one of the first platform mediumship on national television, you know, mm -hmm. fell Long Islander over here. And I think what people like about him, he's just so grounded, seems like a regular businessman, lawyer, whatever, just very straight to the point, but yes. incredibly gifted. There's no fluff mm -hmm. or whatever. It's very direct. Mm -hmm. So it seemed like a lot of his work has helped people ground others, that it's something real and Here's just a guy in jeans and a t-shirt that's doing this thing, a regular guy, but it's yeah. it's very real. And I think he, and he provided I love a lot his of that. Approach. I love his approach to his work. It's a very intelligent approach. It's a very, very thoughtful approach to the work that he does. Um, and so in in you know, having seen his work, uh, you know, obviously on television and everything, we both see that he, he he's incredibly gifted and he oh definitely has a connection. Yeah. But yes, incredibly bright. His head is like a million miles an hour, just very dynamic, a lot of uh, horsepower in that head. It's just a very <laughs> bright, dynamic guy, knows what to say at the moment, just very in flow and in tune. Super nice guy, too. Yeah. I met him a couple of times. I got a chance to wow. talk to him and and just super nice, just very, very generous with his time and his and his and his thoughts. So it's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. But it but it seems for you that the information was so pivotal in your journey like once you're able to gather information it gave you evidence and credibility that this is something real and this is not something totally out there and yeah. information yeah. is huge yeah and so it yeah so it's like, like so i always say like when people are on this journey and, and I, well, i've you know i have people coming to me for readings or anybody who goes to a medium for a reading there's a lot of skeptics out there and i i always say you know this is not um, it's okay to be a healthy skeptic. I have no problem with skepticism. Cynicism is a whole other story. <laughs> That's a whole other right, thing. Right. But um, but I, I always say it's perfectly normal to be skeptical because we, you know, most of the people I find that are skeptical about this and they really, they just really want this to be true. And and I, I'm right there with them, right? And so my job is to hopefully at least part of their journey is to provide some evidence that their loved one is still around them and they still see what's going on in their life and they're still present. Um, and there still can be very much a, 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 a um, a deep part of their a deep connection in their life and a deep part of their life, even though they're physically not here. Um, so that's, that's my job mainly. Yes. And, you know, I think you make a great point that, you know, there, it, it is, it is encouraged to be skeptical, to not just yeah. be desperate to hang on every word, but really to, mm -hmm. in the words of Raymond Moody or my friend, Mark Anthony, to have like a courtroom of evidence of eternity. You know, you want things to really, be presented that this is information and we have to be the own judge if it's something authentic, if it's something evidential, and maybe it may, if it may not be. And so I, I think for each person to really come to their own conclusions and to use their own better judgment as to what they feel is evidential versus something that might not be uh, ringing true. So right. I, I love that approach that you just shared. Yeah. At least, at least if, you know, if I, if I don't convince somebody when they're sitting, you know, across from me, um, at least it, it, hopefully I give them something to think about, you know, and I just hope that pe when people do come in, that they are open minded and they're open to the process of how it could potentially be a connection with their loved ones. And so I always say, um, um, you know, it's, it's, you know, think about it, consider it. I might, I might have two different people come in. And if I were to say in perfect circumstances, I was able to give both sitters, we call, you know, whoever's getting a reading is the name called the sitter. Two sitters, they could have identically the same reading, but one will think it's absolutely, you know, this is this is definitive evidence of my loved one. And the other one person will be like, I don't know yet. <laughs> you know? Right, and right, that's, right. you know, hey, that's okay. You know, it, it might take several times different types of connections, their own exploration about their own direct connection to their loved ones. It might take that in order to really embrace the fact that their loved one is still here energetically. Oh, yeah. And, you know, it's a segue to what I wanted to ask you or to discuss. Knowing you, I think the thing that I really admire and appreciate about you, and I know my viewers were able to pick on this earlier in our conversation, that it seems like you really respect the mental health field and you understand mental health is very real. Yes. And that mediumship and mental health don't work in silo separate corridors. They're mm -hmm. connected. 
Um, but, yeah. but from a mental health perspective, you know, what have you seen in terms of your work, you know, who are people who are going through grief, who have been able to get a reading, have you noticed that it's helped them on their own grief journey to a degree? And have you seen improvement, you know, in, in their own processing of loss? Yeah, and, and it's interesting. I'm seeing more people, more therapists, um, grief therapists, sending their clients to mediums um, after they've come through a, a certain process. You know, I don't think a, a medium is the first step, especially if mm -hmm. someone's really struggling with their grief uh, journey. Um, I do think that it's, it's always good to, to check in with a grief therapist first or a grief coach. Um, but at some point, it's like, okay, they need a little bit more, a little bit more tangible something to really um, feel connected and feel in, in to sense some healing around around their loss. And um, I've seen it where, where people have emailed and they've said, oh my gosh, I, I see things so differently now. Um, I, I know that my person is still around me and I know that I can, I can be a joyful person and, and experience joy in life and know that they're still there with me and they can experience it with me. Even if I can't see them, I know they're there. And so it, it, it can be like within, within an hour, someone's life can really change when they sit with a medium. And, um, and so I always, like I, like I said, just to repeat, I mean, I don't think it's the first stop, especially after someone's lost somebody. I do think, mm. you know, going to a grief group or a grief, a grief therapist, but I do think it can be part of that healing journey and, and part of that validation that um, their loved one is, is still here and has not gone anywhere. Yeah. I mean, you know, who knows? I mean, you know, back in the day, if you would have told a doctor about meditation, they would have said, no, you know, that's not something you want to do. Now you go to a physical and yeah. they say, you should meditate, you should do all these things, you know, it, it does come up. Yeah. So within yeah. the mental health field, you know, I know I myself am training other therapists and a lot of this stuff, but my hope is maybe down the road, you know, if a client comes in, it could be, um, you know, maybe like a part of a treatment plan where, you know, the option of obviously working from a direct practice counseling standpoint, and then, you know, who knows, you know, a referral out to an evidential mediumship, evidential medium, you know, to really work on their grief journey. Because I think psychic and psychology could, you know, mediumship and psychology really could work hand in hand with grief. But you're so spot on, you know, I know you mentioned it's really not to bypass, you know, the necessary steps that people really need to go through, which I know uh, from my experience with you, you have a great deal of psychoeducation understanding of grief and you know, um, stuff like that. But from people in mediumship, you know, and not to like, you know, talk bad or anything, is there like a need, like a needed emphasis on grief education, do you feel? And just more emphasis on how to, you know, kind of encounter a client with grief, how to approach them, how to have understanding of where they may be coming from, what they may be going through. And that could that enhance, you know, mediumship sessions, do you feel? Oh, I, I definitely think of an understanding of that is really important, especially for a medium. Um, there's, there's times when people have sat with me and they're just not in the right place for a reading. And I have to be able to uh, uh, assess that in a sense. I don't have a, a psychology degree. I'm don't, I don't have that type of degree. I'm a, I'm a certified medium, but I'm not, I know I'm not um, educated in this, like you are. Um, but I have to have that awareness of like, is this going to be more of a hindrance to their healing? Or is this going, is, is this just not the time for them to have this experience? I have to be able to assess in a, in a quick moment, um, whether someone who's sitting with me, if they're, if they're, in a place to be receptive for that type of connection. So I do think, um, to answer your question, I do think it's incredibly important for mediums to um, continually study grief therapy, uh, uh, knowledge of, of grief um, psychology, people, what people are experiencing during grief, because everybody's grief is different. I, I mean, I lost two people last year um, in my family, and um, here I am thinking, oh, I'll I'll be all right. <laughs> you know, it's like everybody, everybody expresses grief differently. I was really surprised by how I responded, you know, mm -hmm. by, um, you know, after, after my dad passed, he only, he passed like less than four months ago. I was really surprised by, by how I responded in uh, the weeks following his, his passing. Um, so I think, so for our own, own awareness as well, but also to really understand how other people could experience grief is incredibly important. So um, you know, studying with like David Kessler, um, I, I did a class with him and, wow. um, and I did a lot, I've done a lot of reading on, on grief. I do need to, I feel like I need to do more, more, um, 
learning about that. And I'm, that's my plan for the coming year is to learn more about um, a grief therapy. So. Wow. So right in segue with our conversation, I guess that was, you know, a little intuitive there, but you know, it, it's, <laughs> I, I'm sure it takes your work, you know, to a whole new level, but um, I know um, some that you work closely with John Holland. I was watching a video of him and, you know, obviously first and foremost, my sincere condolences, you know, for the losses, you know, close to you, mm -hmm. you know, and, and dad's passing, uh, you know, and I know John was talk talking about how, we have a human part and we have a spirit side, you know, yeah. we have the human experience, we have the spiritual side. And, you know, I think from what you're saying, and I'm sure it would be very validating to my viewers that, hey, you know, you could be John Holland, Laura Worcester, whoever, we still have mm -hmm. human parts to us. We still have emotions and that's mm -hmm. all a part of the experience. And so I'm so glad you're able to self-disclose, um, Obviously, we wish the circumstances were different, you know, but for you, I, I'm sure that's going to be very validating for those of my viewers who think, hey, I'm so spiritual, and yet why am I hurting so much? But for you, it's like, I think you're, it was a validating point that we can't bypass the human part. I think that's so exactly. significant in our journey. Yeah, that's an incredible point to make. Yeah, that's it is. You can't bypass the human experience. And I think sometimes people think that mediums and psychics and anybody who does this, any type of somewhat related work to any of this, that we just somehow don't experience those human emotions. I'm like, oh my gosh, even probably more so because we feel, every, we're not only feeling our emotions, we're feeling everybody around us, you know, when they're going, if they're going through grief as well, like, oh, <laughs> we feel everything. So um, yeah, so like, it's a very important point to make. Yes, we can't bypass any of that human experience. Yeah, yeah. no, no, certainly. Um, for yourself, like you're around, you know, a lot of heavy stuff you're working around um you know a lot of loss and grief like what do, what's your you know way to kind of move through it you know kind of like your own internal coping skills i'm just kind of curious because i know a lot of my viewers are you know maybe mediums or therapists and they're trying to learn how to really check themselves so they could they could be of best service like do you have any tools that you personally do to just be there you know fully present and uh, you know able to work on your own energy yeah, well, well, the first thing is, is recognizing what I'm capable of doing every day, you know, mm -hmm. because I mean, 20 years ago, when I first started doing all of this, I, I would, I had no problem doing, you know, sitting in a psychic fair and doing 25 readings in a row. It just, I had no problem. I was just like, okay, just keep going. Right. 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 Three minutes, three minutes. But, um, but nowadays, you know, I'm in my mid fifties, so I don't have that that um that bandwidth anymore energetically so i know i have to be incredibly aware of what i'm capable of and that i can fully give myself energetically to my clients and to the other side so that's something that's really important to recognize that um but also i i know that you know i i love to take walks that's so very grounding to me it's very energizing to me and i and i it's it's something i have to keep as sort of a non-negotiable. And when I find that I don't have the time to do it, that I really st feel depleted. So it's important to find a practice or a physical something or other, whether it be going to the gym, going for a walk, uh, going dancing, whatever it may be, um, to find something that's grounding and something that's energizing to you physically. Because you have to remember, you have to be a physical person first. Um, and I think we can we can only become better mediums by being by living a physical, full physical life, meaning that um, not just focusing everything on the spiritual world. Like you know, there was there was a time in my early development, like everything was every book I read. <laughs> Every CD I played was a meditation CD wow. or, or new age music or something or, um, you know, and everything, every, my whole focus was on spiritual awakening, spiritual growth, which was fine. There's a place mm -hmm. for that. But at some point I did realize that, you know, I have to live a fuller life than that in order to really be the best medium I can be. Mm -hmm. So I, I always make sure if there's a, if there's a concert I want to go to, I'm going to go to that concert. If there's a, <laughs> um, a foreign film I want to watch, I'm going to watch a foreign film. It doesn't have to be a spiritual focus. You know, it could be, it can be a comedy show, whatever it is. I, you know, living a full life. Cause what that does is, um, and for people who aren't mediums, they, I mean, people who are mediums will recognize this and people who don't mean to understand this, is that spirit will use a lot of the experiences we have mm. in order to bring forth a message they want to bring. So they kind of use what we have in our own mind, our own experiences, mm. our own consciousness in order to 
to tell us about their life. So it's like psychic charades. So if I haven't had, if I haven't had an experience that they've had, it's hard for me to describe what they're trying to show me because I mm. haven't had that experience. Um, so it's, um, you know, for example, if I didn't know who um, I, I use, I'll use this as an example. Um, there, there was one time not too long ago where I was reading for someone and I saw the cover of a Pink Floyd album, right? Now, I'm not a huge Pink Floyd fan, but I, you know, I listen to the music and I enjoy it. Um, but if I had never known, had that experience of listening to something other than new agey music, <laughs> I wouldn't yeah. be able to know that their boyfriend was a huge Pink Floyd fan, you know? Mm. So, so it's important to like hear other languages, even if you don't speak a language fluently, to maybe hear what French people, you know, French people sound like, or Italian people, or Nigerian people, or Irish people. How do, how does all those dialects and the languages sound? So even if you um, don't know how to speak it, mm -hmm. you'll know it when you hear the cadence of it, or you'll just understand. I think I'm I think I'm hearing this language. Do you understand? So a fuller life, a full, a fully, you know, um, inquisitive life. You know, a very, um, I think is it makes for a much better medium and psychic as well. Oh, sure. I mean, spirit is not cultural. It's not religious. It's universal. And so the exactly. more universal you are, the more universality you have, the more you can understand the eclectic array of personalities and spirits right. over there and people that are sitting us in front of here. So, yeah, yeah I mean, having an ability to kind of get yourself out of your own way and to really explore all parts of the world. I know it's a segue that we were talking about before we recorded how, you know, St. Patrick's Day, yes, you know, yesterday, and it was just important, mm -hmm. no matter what culture you have to really say, hey, you know, this might not be my own culture that I grew up, but I'm an earth citizen and all parts of the world are something that I'm connected with and intertwined mm -hmm. with. And it's a beautiful thing when you're able to broaden yourself beyond just your own box of upbringing and, you know, cultural mm -hmm. identification. Exactly. And, and on the other side of the coin, too, is that, you know, there's there's elements of every, in every human, every human's life of uh, familiarities with certain family dynamics and things mm -hmm. like that that might come through in a reading. Um, but, you know, there, and of course, there might be, like I said, different languages that we may not be aware of that and um, and different different names that we may never have heard before, you know, things like that. So when we have the experience of hearing other other things being described in different ways that we're, it's not part of our usual experience. It can only help us to connect people to their loved ones. So mm. it gives, gives, gives the universe or this uh, spirit something to work with. No, no, I, I love it. I mean, I, as a therapist, particularly with some of my clients who, you know, you know, maybe, you know, midlife or getting a little bit older, they'll come to me and they'll say that, Oh, I used to be psychic in my you know 20s or 30s, but now I feel the gift is gone. It's no longer there. You know, is there a way for people? And I know for yourself, like it seemed like when you were having when you had two kids, meditation was helpful. For, for those who think, a first of all, is a gift ever gone? And B, if that's not the case, is there a way for people to really amplify their own intuitive capabilities? Do you have any? You know, like tips and tools. I know it's hard because probably a subjective basis to it, but in general premise, like what type of things would you recommend on that or any insights on that, you know, observation? Oh, good, good question. Um, well, the first, the first thing, um, you know, someone who feels like they're not as intuitive as they used to be. Um, I just know that just from my own experience as someone who's constantly tuning into their intuition every single day, I know that, and I always tell this to my students as well, how my psychic faculties work today is going to be very different from how it was a year ago and how different it's going to be a year from now. So I think when we have that, you know, we kind of know what it was like to have that experience and all of a sudden it seems like it isn't there anymore. I would have people say, well, maybe you're, maybe you're receiving it differently now. Maybe it's just coming through in a different way. Um, and so to pay attention to maybe or maybe before you were more clairaudient, where now maybe you're more clairvoyant and to maybe switching your awareness as far as like, um, what is it that you're experiencing? Um, some people don't even realize they're experiencing these things until they kind of been walked through it. And you go, and you go I thought I was just like weird. Like I had these things just pop into my head and it just always weird. I'm like, 
not necessarily. Maybe you're receiving this information. Um, I mean, it's so many people that, again, I'm not going to diagnose anybody, but there's so many people who say, I just thought I was ADD. <laughs> you know, they were just like picking up every you know, their coworker stuff and you know, all the stuff popping into their mind. And like, why am I thinking of this? When it, most likely it was the people around them or the people mm -hmm. in there, you know, and I know that was my um, experience when I was in grade school. Mm -hmm. I was so, I didn't realize at the time, but I was so clued in on everybody's energy around me. I just couldn't focus. I, I saw colors around people. I was seeing wow. all these things. And I just thought I had an overactive imagination, but in mm -hmm. fact, I think I was receiving things. So I think, um, you know, we, as time goes on, as we experience life in different ways and, um, and we do different things in life, our psychic faculties may follow that in, in a way that um, we don't recognize that it's changing because we're having mm -hmm. different experiences. Um, so for example, say, say, uh, I don't know, I'm just trying to think, say you're doing this, you know, maybe you're, um, uh, I'm trying to think of something here. Um, maybe you're doing something that's very left brain for work, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe you're a computer programmer or something. And then all of a sudden you decide, hey, I'm going to, I'm for the, you know, I just always wanted to take up guitar. I'm going to take up guitar. So um, you start taking guitar and then over several months, your clairaudient ability may actually change so that mm -hmm. you're, the way you hear things, not only with your physical ears, but with your inner ear um it actually may change and then you don't and then you may not be as clairvoyant as you were because you're not you know working as visually as you were before but you're hearing things differently you're hearing different mm -hmm. frequencies you've never really paid attention to before so you may actually your psychic faculties may start going a little bit more clairaudient and people don't realize it and they go gee i don't i don't see things like i used to but are you hearing things you don't realize it you know mm -hmm. So it's so always paying attention to that. Um, and what was the other question? <laughs> no, no, I think I think you really encompassed it yeah. to a great degree. But but I think also the other part of it was what type of skills could people use? And you know maybe it's just kind of doing things a little bit differently. Sh you know, shifting things. You know, I think in intuition is certainly a muscle, and if you're able to use it differently, know mm -hmm. your strengths and know certain areas that we could work on. We could get back but yeah i mean biologically we're not the same every couple of years so it makes sense okay. you know in all all parts of our life that things are shifting things are changing but like you said it's just a matter of recognizing maybe where you were and not seeing that as a pathology but a, but a new strength and just because it's different doesn't mean it's bad and trying to adapt to where where you are right now intuitively yeah yeah and just know it's i think we're all we all have psychic faculties. We just all experience a little bit differently or at different strengths. So it doesn't matter. And just like, you're right. It's just like a muscle when you're using it and you're aware of it and you um, make note of things that you're receiving, it can get stronger. So. Oh, no, absolutely. And I, I know you mentioned something before, and I know we have a personal connection through social media. So I know that you're definitely being honest when you say that you have a good time. Like I've seen you at, you know, T Swift concerts and going to, you know, some of the concerts are like, you're not lying. You actually, you know, you really do these things. And I'm just trying to live vicariously through you. It's you know, it's Foxborough and all that stuff. But my, my, my question for you is, you know, all, you know, at times like you experienced, you know, just kind of like this chasing of spirituality through books or just kind of, bypassing some, some, not you personally, but like bypassing this reality. But it seems for you, from what you're saying, you found a lot of spirituality through doing things here on planet earth and maximizing your experiences. So my, my question is, is do you think what we do here, the experiences we have, the hobbies that we may have, is that something that plays a larger role when we do leave our bodies? Do we continue, you know, to do, some of the similar things over here and over there. And if so, I mean, geez, I, I hope heaven has enough space for a Taylor Swift concert. I don't know. <laughs> you know, you might have to have people, you know, tailgating in, in, in the gates of heaven, right? So. Right, right. I do, th I do think the things that we do with passion in our life is, it, I think we, we carry that over in some way, shape or form. And um, I mean, isn't it was, I mean, 
I didn't get to go to see, see Taylor Swift. My granddaughter did. So I Maybe that was it. I saw I saw something, but I, I definitely see you've been to a lot of fun events. Yeah. We could both I agree. A lot of concerts. Yeah. yeah, I love yeah. concerts. Yeah, I love music and I'm big on that. Um, but I do think like I think um, there was a recent article, and I don't know if there's any relation to this at all. I mean, I think in our DNA, a lot of these things, there's a spiritual DNA and there's a physical DNA, right? Mm -hmm. I think I saw something recently talking about Taylor Swift. She was yes. um She's related to, gosh, who was she related to? Um, I saw that, like some yeah. famous, Very famous singer poet. back in the, a poet. Yes, yeah. I did. I did see that. Mm. Yeah. I can't, my, I'm blanking out on that poet's name, but she's was very it famous. Flor was it Florence Nightingale? I, I'm trying to remember the person's name. Yeah, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. blanking out too. But I do think, you know, I think I think it's part of, uh, it, it. I think it marks our DNA in some way. I think we can, it can be passed down, those talents, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but also spiritually, I think we can, I think those things can, I, I, I feel like the things that we do in our life actually contribute to the greater consciousness in some way. I don't think I don't think we we exist in a bubble here energetically when we do things that really call to our soul. I think that things that really move us. I think all that energy that's and the knowledge that comes from doing all of that actually at, comes into the consciousness and everybody has access to it and only raises everybody. And so and that's why I think like when I mean again Taylor Swift, <laughs> I think it's a great a great circumstance here to um to point out is that she's doing something she's so passionate about, right? And, and it's obvious she's very passionate about really putting on a good show for people and making sure they really enjoy as much as she is. And they want she wants everybody to enjoy it. And, um, and so I think when people put that much passion in everything they do, it's only going to kind of ripple out to everybody else. And can you imagine how she has inspired people, even if they're not a musician, even if they're not a poet, even... I'm sure that she, you know, just by doing what she's doing, she has influenced so many people to do the things that they really want to do. You know, they, mm -hmm. her music has probably become the soundtrack to things that she probably was, will never do, but they're going on to do, you know? So it's, um, I do think everything we do has an effect beyond this world, beyond this, this generation that we're working, you know, that, that, that we're all a part of. And, um, and also to the greater consciousness. I think it contributes to all of that. So I think anything we do that's good for ourselves, for our own inner work, our own expression of joy, expression of passion, all those things, um, I think it, it helps everybody at some level, even if they're not conscious of it in some way. You may, yeah, so you make a great point. We somehow lasted around 30 something minutes without mentioning Taylor Swift in a conversation, <laughs> which is an, which is a record here. Is uh, it really? break, breaking news. <laughs> it's it's a breaking news kind of thing. Uh, but no, I'm you know personally more of a James Taylor Carol King person, but I love that. I, I love I, that. You know, James Taylor from Stockbridge, or I believe from the New England area, and yeah, you yeah. know, Carol uh, right here from my, my woods here, and I think she grew up in Queens and New York. Yeah, now she's in the, the Northwest. Yeah, but uh, what I what I think Taylor really embodies is just how hate could have a multiplying effect and could spread, but also love, you know, and people could have it could have that same effect where people could just be tuning into the same thing in unison in a big stadium, and everyone's tuned into the same thing. And if we get people really yeah. shifting their focus more from hate to love, mm -hmm. you could see how easily that could spread throughout historical references on both spectrums. Um, they both have a multiplying force. And so that's what I do love about, you know, musical artists, particularly her, because, she, you know, it's it's love. It's not, you know, mm -hmm. hatred. It's not anger. It's uplifting. It's lighthearted. And you could just see people's spirits elevating, you know, yeah. the conscious. And I think they broke a sound record uh, for, for, for music volume, you know, in, in, in a public forum. So that's amazing too, that she did that really? this, that summer. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it hit like a certain point of the loudest possible sound, like in a sound uh -huh. concert all screaming. <laughs> of all time. Yeah. And it just shows you how, you know, people are caught up to the same thing. It could have a multiplying force and a continued yeah. oneness. Um, I had a question too. You have a beautiful necklace that I've noticed. Mm -hmm. Um, and it looks like, I believe a dragonfly or a butterfly. Exactly. So yeah. is it, cause I, I, I wanted to just ask personally, what is the symbolism of the dragonfly to you, but also signs and symbols is something I get asked all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, how do you feel spirit could communicate through signs and what should people look out for? Cause I think a lot of people say, Oh my God, this person's getting signs, but I'm not getting anything. It must mean my loved one doesn't 
care about me or is just busy mm-hmm. doing other things and I'm not important? Like, what would you say regarding signs from a macro perspective, but also from a micro? Because it seems like signs play a big role, you know, mm-hmm. in your life from what I understand. Yeah, they really do. And yeah, this is a dragonfly. It's a gift from a friend. Um, for me, dragonflies are all about transformation. And I do think there's sort of this bridge between the spirit world and us. And, and they can be signs as well. And butterflies can be signs. Dragonflies can be signs. Ladybugs can be signs. Anything, Actually, anything can be a sign. Yeah. Um, but I do think, you know, for some people, it, you, I mean, I, I talk to some people and like there's, there's signs everywhere, right? And I think, are, they, are you just like being really like, is it wishful thinking? <laughs> you know, that's my skeptical side. It's like, yeah. it's a wishful thinking. You're just hoping that, but no, some people are really like this. They're just like magnets to all these things. They have tons of signs everywhere. And it could just be that they're more aware. Um, and it could be just my, maybe the people on there, you know, the people they were connected to on the other side are very playful and very creative and they just bring those things in so easily, which is very possible. Um, I find that a lot of young people that are real, like when they pass, they, they have incredible energy. They'll bring things through, which is unreal. Um, but th- there is, you know, other, other people in, on, on the other side, um, are very quiet and they're very subtle. And they may not be as obvious as showing up with a dragonfly or a butterfly or something. Um, so you kind of have to uh, either be more patient with those people on the other side or um, maybe being a little bit more open to what potentially how they could be whispering to you. Um, you know, they might be, you know, uh, you might walk into the grocery store and you hear your dad's favorite song over the the PA, you know, and then you'd be like, oh, that's my dad's favorite song. And then you just kind of w- walk on and not think about it. Um, I always say if, if you experience something you think might be a sign from your loved one, um, just say, thank you. I heard it. Do it again. You know, <laughs> acknowledge it. Even if you're not 100 percent sure, if you're a little skeptical about it, say, hmm, that's very, is that interesting that that's happening? I wonder if that's so-and-so sings, hi, if it is, hi, I heard it, you know, just acknowledge it. That's all they want is if you acknowledge it. So once you acknowledge it, it tends, I feel like it tends to open up a door to have that happen more for people. And, and I have had people saying, I never get signs ever. I never, ever Mm -hmm. get signs, but I do find there are quiet, quieter people on the other side. They just come through much more subtly. And um, sometimes we just get so busy. We don't see it happening. You know, it's very, it's a very, quiet thing um I had you know some unusual things happen um after my mother-in-law passed last year I was sitting with my husband a few days after she crossed and it was just me and him and at the at the dining room table and I think his sisters had gotten signs from her already my my father-in-law had signs already and he's like where's my mother it's like she hasn't brought through a sign it was only it was just the you know the first week after she passed and almost, as, almost like within 10 seconds after he said that, um, a song came on, came on the radio that had incredible meaning. <laughs> you know, it was like, it was so obvious. <laughs> mm. I just stopped and I looked at him and he just was like, lost it. But yeah. it's, it's little things like that. I think if we're so, we just have to be open to the, first of all, it's like, a, uh, I think there's a little, little bit of a bridge that has to happen between, what's the best word, maybe faith, maybe being o- the openness to the potential of the other side reaching out to us and also them reaching to us, you know, and, um, and us reaching to them, I should say. Um, so there's a little gap in between that, that faith has to fill in the blank. And, um, and so I just think, you know, it, no matter how long it takes to receive that message from somebody, just, just have that little bit of faith and hold on to that. And just, and even if you're not a hundred percent sure, just to say, okay, hope, I hope that was a message. Thank you very much. You know, so, um, but since then, I mean, my mother-in-law has like brought her through a lot. She's come through so many times. <laughs> it's mm. incredible, incredible. But um, yeah, wow. so I, I, that's the best advice I could offer to someone who's looking for signs from the other side. Yeah. yeah. And I think from what you're saying, it's also important to not be too locked on one particular sign that we may be looking for right. and just invalidate all other things that happen in real time, you know, it's like, I don't know, I'll give a sports analogy because I'm a sports guy. Like who is the greatest quarterback of all time? He's from your area, Tom Brady, right? You know, so Mm -hmm. when he calls a play, he has 
ideally like his receiver that he wants to go to. But if it's not there, he'll go to whatever is there. He'll be in flow. Uh, and yeah. I think that led to his success. He wasn't just locking on one guy like my Jets quarterbacks do. They're able to survey the field and just to be mindful and aware of what's going on, what's there versus what may be not there mm-hmm. at the moment, but may unfold a couple of plays later. And Great so time. I think spirit, we have to kind of be the Tom Brady's of spirits. We have to kind yeah. of be in the flow, <laughs> not try to force things, be cool and just allow you know, what's there to kind of, you know, come. And sometimes it's not what we expect. I mean, some people just expect their loved ones to just implode in, fl- in flames in front of them and say hi. And it's not, you know, kind of like what the movie in the movie Ghost. It's a little uh, yeah. different, but yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. I think for yourself to hear that, and I'm sure you've seen like a lot of other stories that go beyond synchronicity. I think they're just super synchronicity as Gary Schwartz yeah. would say, where just the probabilities of that thing happening and then another thing happening and another thing happening it's usually like two or three synchronicities happening at once like you just can't you know make that up it's just the veils no longer are there and it's just heaven and earth colliding you know so yeah exactly that's a great point and and, and a great analogy with tom brady too <laughs> absolutely because obviously the the, the respect man- yeah yeah, a lot. Yeah. I mean, obviously his focus has been so like keenly aware of football, right? So he's got this mm-hmm. incredible instinct and experience of football, mm-hmm. but there has to be an element of intuition too that grows from that. Mm-hmm. And so it sounds like, and, and that's a great analogy that you put together is that, um, yes, he may have a certain goal in mind about where he wants the ball, who's going to catch the ball, but he's going to be open to other receivers. Absolutely. So, and, and that's, that's a great segue to something else is that, yes, being open to um, uh, how your person's going to talk to you, but also um, when it comes to like following your own intuition in life, not just connecting to people on the other side, but your own intuition in life is that um, uh, for example, there was somebody who asked a question recently about um, I'm getting this complete, I'm getting this nudge to do something, but then it seems like there's roadblocks here and there. Is, does that mean the, the original nudge to do something is that no longer valid? And, and I, and the way I wanted to respond to her was that um, I'm going to get a chance to, I hope to at some point was to say, you know, you, yes, you had a nudge to do something, but doesn't mean that the way you're going to get to that particular goal is not necessarily going to be the same thing. Like say, if it's a three, three month Mm -hmm. goal, the way to get there isn't necessarily going to be the same path every single day. It's going to change as aspects change of it, right? But you're still getting there. So don't worry right, about right, it. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, getting- I mean, uh, the Waze app may take you a couple exactly. different roads. <laughs> it's, it's, it's maybe some yeah. shady areas that Waze does not seem to care about these days. And, it, you know, you come out alive, who cares as long as we get to that point, you know? So yeah, that's why I was just thinking Waze, just as you yeah. said that. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, so it's, you know, so it's, so to let, you know, to kind of trust those initial nudges that your intuition is talking to you about generally where you know where you're going, but to be open to how, you know, what street is going to take you. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we call that kind of like flow readiness where you're just in the yeah. flow. You're not trying to force it. You just allow things, you know, it's a combination of, yes, you have to put yourself out there, come to that halfway point, but then know to kind of stick, take a step back and meet at the right point, yes. you know, and not overdo it. So you know, exactly. or try to force stuff. So I love it. Love it. Yeah. Um, before we go, um, there's obviously a lot of calamity in many ways happening, you know, in some parts of the world. And I look at people like you as just the ultimate presence of diplomat, of agents of peace and, and goodwill and people who don't like get too off kilter. But for those who may be impacted by what's going on in the news media cycles or around the globe, you know, how do we embody you know, the energy that you exude more so, because I, I have a feeling if more people were in alignment with, you know, Laura or Taylor or, you know, any of these people, we just have such a different world. But what would you recommend for people just kind of have that steady, you know, kind of kind of halfway point where we're not getting too off kilter with everything going mm-hmm. on? Well, let me set the record straight. First of all, I don't, I don't not get off kilter. <laughs> at, at least, at least, that, at least that's the exuded energy that I, that I, 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 hope, <laughs> I try I, I over the years I I feel like I my my center point is peace typically you know but there's things where I just go why are they doing this this is crazy it's like sure. life would be so much easier if they did a b right. and c da, 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 da. so I, I get you know I can, I can go off on my high horse with that but but as far as like the bigger picture here um 
Yeah, it and yeah, and it breaks my heart some of the things that I've seen around the globe. You know, it really does, like anybody it would. Um, it, it just, it's not, it's not fair. The innocent people anywhere being being affected, and the children and who have no no say in the matter here. You know, um, but I, I, my my main thing is like, okay, who who can I help? That who's right in front of me? Like, it, I know I can't help someone across the globe. I can pray for them. I can I can pray for peace. I can pray for you know, hopefully that the the powers that be like that somehow guidance and, and common sense prevails in some way. Um, that that I have power over. But then what can I do right around me? Like who who could use my help right here? And um, knowing that somehow or another that somehow it's it'll affect the greater whole. I have to think. I have to trust that that's the case. That whatever we small things we can do within our reach will help everybody at some point. And so that's that's what I, I kind of focus on, you know, with that and, um, and trusting that, you know, there's people having, you know, experience a journey in their life that's incredibly challenging and knowing that for some reason they're, they're having this experience for a reason, possibly it's their own spiritual path. And it's, it's difficult to watch. Like, just like if you have a family member or if you're a parent, you have a child that's going through a difficult time and you just, you you're, you feel powerless to help them. Um, it's just, you know, hoping that somehow they come out of this with some strength and some awareness of, of something bigger than them, you know, bigger than their, what they're going through. Um, so like we can always think about the, our worst times in our lives when you have either major losses or try, you know, trial trials that really felt like we wouldn't get out of, um, you know, somehow we got through those. Right. So I have to trust the people who are also at this point, I mean, we wouldn't want to wish a lot of this on anybody, but, you know, hoping that they can come out. Okay. You know, in some way and to maybe go forth and help others, you know, in some way, but um, that's, I, that's the best best thing I can say is, you know, to be incredibly hopeful and, and um, trust that somehow or another that, that um, somehow we'll end up in peace. You know? mm. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's beautifully said. It's, it's kind of like generating the hope past a lot of the pain, but also, yeah. you know, not underestimating the light and power that we all have, right. that our microcosm can impact the macrocosm. And we, we are, yeah able to take respons responsibility individually for that light, one person to the next, we wow. can really connect a lot of light to really cast a, you know, a shadow over all this darkness and light will prevail. But I just think a lot of people need to check in their own light and understand how my light may impact the next person, the next person. And that's, I think that was so beautifully said. Uh, Laura, is there any other um, intuitive messages or things that are coming to you that you feel you would like to share with uh, my viewership uh, before we close. I know you certainly have shared a lot of your own personal journey lessons, you know, from heaven and higher realms. And it's been a beautiful conversation, but I'm wondering if there's any last messages that are coming to you, any words that, uh, you know, is coming to your mind at this time. Yeah. Um, I, I would say, cause I, I feel like I'll, even though you know, we're all connected on social media now, right? We all seem to like know what's, what everybody's doing and what's going on and everything. But at the same time, there just seems to be a, um, a sense of disconnection and even mm -hmm. still, you know, which is really odd to me. You think we'd be feeling so much more connected. Um, but I just, I think the, the one thing that it's been obvious to me over the last week or so, you know, talking to people who, feel deeply for the world and feel deeply for the you know, direction people, you know, people are going in right now is that the things that you worry about the most right now, other people, there's so many other people who feel exactly the same way you do, mm -hmm. you know, and that you're not alone in feeling like things could be better, you know? And so just know, I just hope people know that there's so many other people in the world who feel exactly the way they're there. They feel and trying to bring just as much light to the world as they are. Um, so to not give up on that when it feels like what's being reflected back to you is not the case, you know? So I think that's important. The most important thing. Wow. To know we're not alone. And it's certainly a lot of empaths, you know, are feeling a lot of things, but just know we're not alone. And, mm -hmm. you know, we're all, we're all kind of tuning into the same thing, but you know, yeah. God willing, things will work itself out and we'll find more of that halfway point and least extreme forces at hand, you know, controlling, you know, situations and a world yeah. that represents more of our true colors versus, you know, things that are just not in alignment with who we are. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. Well, Laura, I really thank you for your time. Now, if someone you know were to want to reach out to you to get a reading, um, yeah. I don't know if you're having any upcoming events. I see you're also you're spreading a lot of your wings now. As you said, you're with the Forever Family Foundation. I see you're with, um, I think, is it, uh, the, what's the place in New Jersey? I forget the church, but is oh, it the Journey, Jan journey, the with journey Within? Yeah, j so you're doing a lot. So you're yeah. quite busy, but what's the best way, you know, for, for one of my viewers to get, a, you know, to reach a view if they're interested in a private session or just one of your upcoming events? Sure. Um, and just go to my website at laurawister.com. Very simple. Yeah. LauraWorcester.com, and uh, if you could find Laura there and check out you know her events, and I highly recommend you know if it's the right moment, you know trusting your gut to contact Laura uh, for any of her services. She's an incredible, incredible evidential medium and brilliant intuitive. Well, Laura, I couldn't thank you enough for your generous time, inspirational words, and heartfelt messages today. Uh, it's it's such an honor having you here, and I'm just so inspired by the light that you cast and present to the world and all the lives that you impact, you know, in, in, in your work. So I couldn't thank you enough. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. Like again, like I said before, it's been an honor to be on the program today. And thank you so much, Jacob. And keep shining your light too. You're, you're <laughs> shining brightly for sure. And you've got a long way to go still. <laughs> got, a, got a lot, got a lot of luck behind me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Thank you, Laura. Thank you all for tuning in to a wonderful conversation with Laura Wister. She is just a bundle of light and shared profound wisdom and insight here on my platform. So thank you all for tuning in. I hope and I know you enjoyed this conversation as much as I did. It was a great dialogue with, again, a lot of beauty, a lot of insights and a lot of tools uh, to really navigate you know, the intuitive waters of our life. So thank you for tuning in. Make sure you come back here next week for weekly guests coming your way on the Wisdom Jacob's Ladder, and we'll see you then. Thank you.